Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. We continue reading from the 40 principles of the religion. Al-Arba'in fi usul al-Din. And uh, we have reached Qira'at al-Qur'an. With Imam al-Ghazali. Uh, began by hadith. by saying Allah's Messenger وسلم, said my community's best act of worship is reciting the Quran the two issues here the first one is the uh, uh, the chain of uh, of narrators of course it is definitely reciting the Quran Definitely, reciting Quran is one of the best uh, acts of worship. This is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu said in another hadith, which Imam Ghazali mentions in the uh, original, in the Hiya of al-Din, narrated by al-Bukhari, from the hadith of uh, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, the best amongst you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. You cannot really teach it without learning it anyhow. So you cannot separate. You might learn it and not teach it, but the best is if you learn it and teach it. And uh, this is the uh, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all humanity. This is the last message this is the culmination of the history of revelation um, so it's the one of the utmost things and of course when you uh, when you learn the Quran you teach the Quran you have the blessings but uh, also the understanding it was sent so that it that it could be understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated really uh, the this uh, this Quran for all the things that are related, all the activities that are related to the uh, to the Quran, whether it's really uh, a recitation, whether it's really uh, understanding, and within the Quran, everything. When we say everything, it's from a religious perspective, everything, and uh, uh, if you ask the about the Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, you know, says that, uh, uh, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in more than one place included the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as a source of, uh, not not as any source of, uh, of knowledge, but as the source of knowledge in terms of uh, of religion, and this is why uh, we always talk about the uh, the Quran and the Sunnah. The Sunnah explains uh, the uh, the Quran. Those who interpret the Quran first, they use the Quran itself. Uh, so they use the Quran to see to interpret the Quran. Then they use the uh, if there is anything in the Hadith that could help. At any rate. He وسلم, also said, if the Qur'an was in a skin, uh, the fire would not touch it. The, uh, this, the chain of narrator here is, uh, uh, is a weak chain of narrators. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, uh, would protect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed the protection of the Quran in terms of the message okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed the protection of the message but it doesn't mean that uh, this mean that uh, burning the paper itself the paper itself 
We talk about the Mus'haf, we don't talk about the Quran. The Quran is protected. The Mus'haf, really, you try to protect it, but ultimately, if the if the Mus'haf is uh, uh, is worn out, that it's, it's not usable anymore, so what do you do with it? Um, the, uh, the first thing is burying it in a land that is clean, okay? That's one thing. It, they even said that it could be buried in the mosque itself. This is why uh, in, uh, when they discovered the, uh, the, uh, the Masahif and the uh, either uh, complete or uh, they lack something in, uh, in Yemen, and there is a whole institution in, uh, in Berlin, in Germany, uh, working on these uh, masahif. And of course, the aim is not really pure academic. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, I visited this uh, uh, academic institution. They are doing a wonderful job. But they are looking for... Uh, variations in the text that's what it is it's very simple and there are no uh, the, the Quran is is the Quran and uh, what happens is that even during our time when we have excellent uh, excellent really computers we don't rely on scribes where, who could make a mistake in writing. And nevertheless, because even computers, still sometimes they make, you know, the people who feed the computer, uh, people who type the text, they might make a mistake. And this is why after the, uh, the draft, if we call it as such, if we could call it as such, is, uh, is prepared then it is still given to uh, scholars of the uh, of the Quran to uh, make sure that nothing, uh, no mistake, zero, um, not in the uh, not in the letters themselves, not in the uh, uh, in any illustration that would help in understanding the uh, the text of the. Uh, uh, of the Quran, so scholars will uh, will uh, do the job as always. And from time to time, there are masahif uh, that are printed, and you'll find it in the market. And uh, you'll have a fatwa. Uh, here we have in, in Palestine more than once the Mufti, the Grand Mufti, issued fatwa not to use specific uh, print because there's a because there's a uh, at least a mistake and that's enough and there's nothing like the variations they have i'm talking about germany again they don't there are there's nothing like the variations they have in the uh in the various copies of the uh, four gospels and we speak about four gospels in the and we never speak about four Qur'ans, four, three Qur'ans, two Qur'ans. We don't have that. Then the Imam Ghazali mentions another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no intercessor in a better position with Allah on the day of resurrection than the Qur'an, not a prophet, not an angel, nor other than them. And uh, I think it's important by, by way of uh, uh, to, uh, to talk about uh, intercession. There's a hadith of uh, mentioned uh, in uh, Muslims' compendia of uh, hadith, Sahih, uh, Sahih Muslim. In that uh, in that hadith, 
uh, which he narrated from the, uh, the report of uh, Abi Umama. Iqra'u al-Qur'an fa'anna wa yajiu yawm al-qiyamati shafi'an li sahibah. Narrated by Muslim, this is this should be more than enough as a, a comment on the uh, notion of uh, intercession. Your own recitation of the Quran intercedes on your behalf on the day of judgment. Then, uh, yet another hadith. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, whoever, whoever was preoccupied with reciting the Quran from supplic supplicating me or beseeching me, I will give him the best reward of those who are grateful. Yes. This is narrated by Tirmidhi and he said, uh, Hassan Gharib. It's Hassan. It's Hassan Gharib. Know that reciting the Quran has outer manners and inner secrets. As for the outer manners, they are three. The first is that you recite it with respect and a posture of veneration, and that sanctity attaches to your heart and a posture of sanctity attaches to your outer form. So what's this form? You already know the relationship between the heart and the limbs and the way in which light, lights ascend from it to them. The posture of sanctity is that you sit still with your head bowed itrak or ras and are in a state of ritual purity though amongst uh, um, scholars there is uh, a discussion about whether one can uh, uh, recite the Quran without touching the Mus'haf, etc. But no one, no, none of them would say it is not better uh, to uh, have the uh, purification like wudu or ghusl if not, if that's necessary. No one says that it's not better. It is always better to uh, to have uh, the uh, the tahara. So the posture of sanctity is that you sit still with your head bowed and in our inner state of ritual purity, facing the direction of prayer, the qibla, not reclining or sitting cross-legged or sleeping, just as you sit in front of a uh, Quran teacher. When he says sleeping, of course it does not mean literally sleeping. He means laying down. You don't do that. You should read slowly and with emphasis, articulating each letter without mumbling. Mumbling here again, the hadrama that we spoke about in a, a you know, previous uh, uh, reading which is the uh, the uh, a very quick way of recitation of reading that prevents you really from understanding because the emphasis here is on finishing a recitation uh, on YouTube there are several uh, recitation of the Quran uh, the whole Quran in about seven hours. So when you when you hear about uh, 
some scholars reciting the whole Quran uh, at night, for example, in prayer. It, it is doable and already we have the uh, uh, published proofs, let's say, of the uh, of the whole uh, Mus'haf being recited in, in about seven hours, which is, uh, which is doable. But again, Imam Ghazali is going to explain to us uh, the best, uh, the best, really uh, quantitatively, and uh, what does it mean uh, in terms of understanding or uh, uh, or not? Ibn Abbas, anhu, said, "It is more beloved to me to recite Ida uh, Zulzilat and Al uh, Qari'ah with reflection than it is." to uh, then it is to recite al-Baqarah and al-Imran by mumbling so here uh, in this uh, narration about Ibn Abbas uh, um, he prefers um, slow recitation with understanding to uh, quantitatively uh, reciting a larger part of the uh, of the Quran but um, in a hurry without understanding the second is to yearn at certain times of the day for the greatest level of virtue in reciting it. Um, I, there is something about the, um, the form, how you sit. Uh, when he said sitting cross-legged, this has um, this has really one specific meaning in English, because you you could st you could stretch your legs, and having uh, having them uh, you know cross legged uh, while stretching them, just simply you just put one on top of the other and you are stretching, while the Arabic mutarabba is uh, is not that. So Imam Ghazali has a, you know, says that it's not a, a, an, a, an appropriate uh, way of sitting, um, but it's pretty common um, uh, nowadays. Could be, it could be that during his days, that was not common to. Uh, but terbiya is really uh, you you sit. Um, it's not sometimes possible to. Uh, but you sit and your uh, your legs are uh, you sit that's either on the floor or on a, a wide uh, wide chair or uh, sofa where your uh, uh, you bend your uh, knees uh, so you just bring your uh, uh, your feet um, closer to you and they will be beneath each other. At any rate, simply the uh, cross leg is not enough to explain it. I mean, even after uh, all that I have said, uh, Allahu Alam, if people uh, understood the... Uh, but this is the pretty common way of sitting in a halaqa, in dars, um, salat al-jum'ah, so I think this is the, uh, the most common form. Uh, why, why Imam Ghazali has a problem with that, I don't know. But that's that's what it is. The second is to yearn at certain times of the day for the greatest level of virtue in reciting it. This means reciting it in prayer whilst standing, especially in the mosque and at night. The heart is clearer at night because it is empty, empty from preoccupations. Like during the day, say that people uh, who come to the uh, noon prayer, uh, usually in the ancient cities in the Muslim world, the mosque is pretty close to the shops and what have you. <clears throat> so it's inevitable that some of the business, uh, you know, the, the merchants, some of the, uh, uh, they will come to the uh, mosque uh, during the uh, prayer time. Uh, and they might be preoccupied with the uh, with the business that they are doing. 
it, there might might be doing inventory. I'm, uh, I'm simply saying that it, uh, there could be a meeting, there could be merchandise coming immediately after the salah. Uh, but at night, it's, I remember in uh, in Friday is not really uh, a day off in uh, in Western countries and. Uh, the Imam who uh, leaves the uh, Friday prayer should make sure that he will not go beyond uh, a specific number of minutes uh, because uh, that's really pretty much what people have in terms of break from their work. There could be there could be students, there could be those who are professionals and they have no problem, uh, especially if they uh, own their businesses and what have you. But an employee is bound to go back at the end of uh, the break uh, so one should not really uh, prolong and the uh, son of the prophet وسلم, is was the uh, a shorter a shorter uh, two short uh, sermons on friday two short speeches and a longer uh, recitation uh, today is the other way around it seems that most, uh, I have no statistics, but it's, this is something that, an impression that I have, that most uh, most uh, uh, imams on Friday uh, tend to speak uh, more than they uh, recite. There could be a reason for this, but I'm simply, uh, men, I simply wanted to mention something that I, that I became aware of. At night, we are we are not preoccupied, so it's 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 good to uh, to do that because it is empty. I think even the uh, empty, which is problematic, really. People are not empty, but not preoccupied. Empty. There is a certain concept in Greek, epoch, yeah, uh, empty, and the famous Arabic. Uh, word among students if they would like to speak to their professor during fourth hour uh, or during fourth hours uh, they will use the word uh, fadi are you empty uh, they don't ask whether one is is uh, has the time uh, uh, to meet with them uh, are you uh, um, occupied you know uh, are you busy uh, now? They ask, are you empty? It's very, uh, I find it very uh, inappropriate. If you were free during the day, the hustle and bustle of, uh, of creation with their work would disturb your inner state, inner peace, and distract you from contemplation. This would be especially the case if you were expecting to be requested for some business affair, yet, no matter how you read it, even if it is while lying down without being in a state of ritual purity, it is not bereft of virtue. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised all forms of recitation when he said in the Quran, of course, those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who remember Allah while standing, sitting, or on their sides. Well, the context of this particular verse uh, from uh, Surah An-Nisa. Um, the context is really uh, about uh, the uh, pondering upon the uh, signs in the universe. And the uh, alternation between the day and uh, and night, the uh, all this expanse of, of the universe. That's the context. Wait, and the, it continues. Wait, if I can run for the sun, I'll be Rabbi. I'm a child. This is part of the subhanahu wa taala. The night. In fact, it's very important to realize. Wait, if I can run for the sun, I'll be Rabbi. Thinking, thinking is. Uh, in such a context is very very beautiful thinking about the creation of the heavens and the earth 
and that it's not in vain. They will reach the conclusion that it was, you know, these, this universe was not created in vain. And this is an invitation to ponder upon the universe. There's a clear invitation, more than one place in the Quran, to look at the uh, horizons, to look about the signs everywhere, including within yourself, which means that the universe is intelligible. You could basically compute things. Yes. Nevertheless, in what we have mentioned, there is additional virtue. If you are one of the merchants on the path of the afterlife, then it is not easy for you to leave off virtue. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, Whosoever reads the Quran while he is standing in prayer receives for every letter the reward for 100 good deeds. However, for whoever reads the Quran while he is sitting in prayer, receives for every letter the reward of 50 good deeds. Whoever reads the Quran outside of prayer, yet in a state of ritual purity, receives the reward of for 25 good deeds. Whoever reads the Quran while not in a state of ritual purity receives the reward for 10 good deeds. The third manner is the amount of recitation, which has three levels. The least of them is that you complete the Quran once a month. The highest of them is that you complete the Quran once every three days. The Prophet وسلم, said, Whoso, whoever reads the entire Quran in less than these days has not understood it. Uh, this is uh, let me uh, explain whoever reads the entire Quran in less than three days has not understood it this is not a prohibition this is not a prohibition to recite the Quran you know, in, uh, in less than three days. There's no prohibition. Number two, if you do recite the Quran in three days, the blessings, the barakah, the, the hasanat, the ajr, the good deeds are still there for you. As long as you are, your intention is for always for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, whoever reads the entire Quran in less than three days has not understood it. That's not a prohibition. That's number one. Number uh, number two, it doesn't mean that you don't earn hasanat, um, good deeds for really reciting the Quran during such a short uh, period. As I said, some people um, can read it in less and much less than uh, three days, two days, and ultimately one day, part of one day. Whoever is the entire Quran in less than three days has not understood it. The middle level is to complete the Quran once every week. As for completing for completing it once a day, once daily. This is not recommended. As for completing it once daily, this is not recommended. So it is possible and people did it. And ultimately uh, uh, I mean, if you could, if you could read and recite and uh, understand, that's really the uh, uh, the right way of doing it. Be aware of taking liberties with your intellect and saying whatever is good and beneficial must be even better and more beneficial if done more frequently. I think we will go back to this paragraph, inshallah, uh, tomorrow. It's Friday. Uh, Jum'a Mubarak, inshallah.
and uh, let's keep each other inshallah in prayer subhanakallah wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh